This presentation is an introduction and overview of the GEM standard. The presentation's been broken down into five parts. So a GEM interface is the software that it's allowing the, the factory to communicate with the equipment. It has functionality to control the equipment. It has functionality to monitor the equipment. So it's a lot of benefits by standardizing on a GEM interface because it allows you to save a lot of time on integration. The main purpose of the GEM standard is to facilitate integration of the equipment at the factory. And if everybody uses the same interface, of course, that dramatically decreases cost at the factory. So in a basic implementation, like here, you'll have a, some sort of a factory system and there's different names for it. And they're, they're usually tied to the manufacturing execution system of the factory. And they have some sort of a host computer is what the gen standard calls it or a host which is talking to the equipment and the equipment has a gem interface so gem is that piece of software that allows them to connect in some factories the host computer will actually take a line based approach and they'll have a uh, each equipment will have a gem interface and because each equipment is different, every GEM interface, yes, it's gonna have some common functionality, but they're also, each one is gonna be unique. They're gonna publish unique data, have unique events available for publication, some unique control features, um, but the messaging is all standardized and, and more things are standardized. When you get into the GEM standard, there's a few different standards that are related to GEM that you need to know. GEM is built directly on top of a standard called SEX2. And this is a library of messages that have been standardized that provide the functionality that all factories in manufacturing need. So the SEX2 standard has a big library and the GEM standard has focused on particular messages that it wants every equipment to support. And then there's a protocol layer and there's two different protocols that are possible. One is serial based communication using RS-232. It's called the SEX1 standard. And then there's network-based communication, which is based on ethernet technology. And this standard's called HSMS. And that's what everybody's really using today, simply because network communication is pretty fast and pretty easy to set up. So the GEM standard, like the others I just mentioned, are are from an, an industry standards organization called SEMI. The GEM standard itself is, is called Generic Model for Communication and Control of Manufacturing Equipment. And it is a live standard in the sense that there is a committee, I'm, I'm head of that, of that committee, and we periodically review the standard and make improvements to it. So it's constantly evolving and it is adopting new technology um, just to make things better all the time. And of course, it's a very mature proven technology. It's been around for a while, but it has gotten better. And, that's, and this maturity has allowed it to grow and be so effective. And it's being used in so many different industries today and it's certainly at the head of smart manufacturing. Um, really the semiconductor front end, the factories that are building the wafers and electronics, they are really kind of ahead of the game on smart manufacturing. They've been doing it for a long time and doing it really well. And a lot of other industries have noticed and now they're seeing 
that the GEM standard is a key enabling technology for this sophisticated industry. So it's being adopted all over the place because it's so effective. And it really is a complete standard. Here's a summary of some of the features that are key that are making GEM so successful. One is event notification. This is a real-time notification of what's happening at the equipment. So the board in, the board out, those are part of the event notification that GEM has built in. And you can have your own events. There's alarm notification to allow the host to track when anything dangerous is happening at the equipment. There's a bunch of generic uh, data variable collection for collecting data in real time, for monitoring sensors and any status information from the hardware and software. There's recipe management for uploading, downloading, deleting, selecting recipes remotely. There's remote control, which has built in standardized starting, stopping, aborting, and allows for custom control. So each equipment is allowed to have custom functionality for to be controlled, whatever needs to be controlled. There's adjustment settings through the GEM interface, allowing you to tweak the equipment behavior. Uh, these are for settings that are outside of the recipe. And then there's uh, some operator interface requirements and, and functionality. So if you need to send a message to the operator that's very detailed and specific, just like a text message, you can do that. So this concludes part one of the GEM introduction. Please proceed to part two to learn more information.